Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Ones Ready Podcast. You're in the team room. It's just me today, but I do have a special guest. Um, I mean, I really appreciate you joining us. Uh, we have retired command chief, Will Markham. Um, Will, you've been, well, you're retired now, but you were a combat controller for a good 30 years, right? Uh, no, not quite. I was I was in for 30 years, but I was a combat controller for just about 25. I, I uh, cross-trained from being uh, security forces and I uh, just wanted to do, you know, even even better stuff for our nation. And so got out of the cop career field and came into combat control. Just a cool 25 years, no big deal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, no, don't worry about it. But that's not actually why we have you on today because um, there's, I mean, we could, we could talk about combat control as much as you want or aspect war, but I, you know, we were, we were talking beforehand, um, you know, and, and we've said it in previous podcasts, like, Hey, you can't rest on your laurels. You can't worry about what you did in the past. It's about what you do today and in the future. Yeah. Um, and, and you're kind of embodying that really, um, you along as several of the other foundations, associations and, and charitable organizations, but, um, you are, I think you're actually the founder of project OVET. You mind going into that a little bit? Yeah. So after retirement, uh, in 2016, you know, um, the fortunate thing that I had, or maybe unfortunate thing I had as being a command chief, you're kind of. You're, excuse me, you're, you're kind of walk through the VA system. You sit there in that transition, you know, TAPS, the transition assistance program, and you get the VA brief and you kind of get the, what I perceived as the, you know, woe is me brief. And um, the gentlemen that briefed it probably weren't probably the best representatives of the VA or the VA system or the department of uh, disabled veterans, or, you know, it was just, it was just kind of like, Hey, here's how you get over on the government. And I, I didn't perceive that as well because, you know, most of, you know, probably 99.9% .9 of our special operators or people in special operations, you ask them how they're doing and they're going to say, I'm good. Don't worry about it. I'm good. I'm not going to complain because one, nobody will listen and two, nobody can do anything about it. So I'm just going to tell everybody I'm good and I'm going to drive on. I'm going to do the mission. And so we've been doing that throughout our entire careers. And so when you get briefed by, somebody that is not of your, you know, cloth, not of your culture, not of your, you know, brotherhood or sisterhood. Um, you, you really don't take, you really don't take it to heart or you don't take it kindly. The people had all good intentions, basically what they were trying to tell us in that transition assistance is, hey, when you go to the VA, when you get your appointment, tell them everything that's wrong with you. You're no longer on jump status. You're no longer on dive status. You're not going to get taken off the target because there's no more targets to be taken to. And so it was, it was, it's hard for people like us, and you're going to experience the same thing when, when you get ready to retire, hopefully after this conversation and, um, you know, some conversations we have after this will we'll set you up for success. But the main thing is, is that, you know, I was walked through the system and uh, came out. I, I, uh, I started with my retirement about a couple months right after retirement. I was 80 uh, percent cop and pen. And I don't, you'll see I don't use the word disability because I don't believe I'm disabled. Um, I think compensation and pension, just like anybody retiring or getting out of another job, they receive their compensation and pension for the job they did. And we look at compensation and pension as something like, you know, this is, you know, the military rented me, you know, and my, Scott Zastro, one of my former <laughs> teammates, um, the 18 Delta, and Triple Nickel, when I went into Afghanistan, you know, had the, the pleasure of being attached to them. You know, Scott Zastro is our medical consultant. And the best way he broke it down for me was that I could understand, you know, for a guy that drags my knuckles across the ground when I walk is this is so important. Guys have to, guys and gals have to realize that the, the military rented you just like you would go out and rent a military car. Or, I mean, you went out and got a rental car. And, and Jerry, you've been on plenty of training trips. Yeah. How many times? We don't treat rental cars well. Cars, <laughs> not in the same condition or not, uh, not with normal wear and tear you know, that you did when you got it, you know, that's just the nature of the beast. And that's the nature of our job. That's the nature of the military. And because you didn't return that rental car or that SUV from, you know, the Vegas training range or tone of or anything like that. And, you know, maybe a couple of them rolled here and there, you know, you had to pay for it, you know, 
you might not personally have to pay for it, but somebody's got to pay for it. And most likely it was probably the military that paid for it. Well, you're the same way. You're that rental car. You're that rental vehicle. You're that means of transport for the military. And they should return you to civilian life, which we are never civilians because we're veterans. So we're still involved with the military, but they return you to veteran life with normal wear and tear. Now, if there's, you know, broken arms, broken legs, broken back, broken neck, psychological issues, unhit, you know, hidden wounds, stuff like that. Well, then, you know, the Department of Veteran Affairs should have to pay for that. And that's that's basically what we look at comp and penance. And so, again, I was really fortunate. I was 80%. A couple months later, I got bumped up to 90% because all of my all of my records were going through. And then later, I was 100%. And it, it was just kind of overwhelming. Well, um, the CARE Coalition and my, my VA uh, advocate was like, you know, Will, you should probably be 100% total and permit looking at your records. And I was like, yep, sure, what, what, whatever it takes, you know, just let me know what I got to do. But 18 months later, I go in for a, a compensation and pension examination. I'm having a great day. I'm working at a nonprofit at the time. You know, things went great for me after retirement. I got no complaints. And so I showed up to the showed up to the appointment and I had a great day. In fact, it was down at um, Cape Coral, a new brand new clinic down in um, Cape Coral, Florida. In fact, I got there early. I took a little nap outside the, the clinic and uh, immediately when I walked in, uh, a nurse was running down a checklist just as we would for any type of operation. Hey, Mr. Markham, how are you feeling today? Man, I feel great. In fact, you'll always hear me say outstanding. You know, because again, nobody cares. It's a run, you know, it's a, it's a yep. hypothetical question. Nobody cares how you're doing. They're just saying it. So I'm doing outstanding, go in for my uh, range of motions and everything. And of course, you know, I'm on a lot of medications now, you know, after I retired, that, that put it, the pressure on the force and family, the, the physical therapist I had there before, the strength coach I had there, the, all the things we had in special operations, you know, that, that came about after 9-11 and then got really good in 2010. And then at the at my peak in 2016, when I retired, all those things I had to keep my mind and body healthy, no longer, no longer. So now I'm 18 months out. Now I'm really starting to feel the psychological effects of the uh, being retired. I'm really starting to feel the physical effects of being retired. But again, nobody cares. And so I just thought I was good. And in seven minutes, that nurse had determined that I had gotten better, both psychologically and physically. Yep. I had gotten better. You're not, you're not allowed to have it. You can't not allowed to have a good day. It's a freaking miracle, man. You know, like I should have been in some Southern Baptist, nothing in Southern Baptist church, but all I could see was a scene in the Southern Baptist church and everybody's singing and everybody's hallelujah. And, you know, woo, we sing Will Markham. Light, and, lights you know, are coming I walked down. out of there. Yep. <laughs> Three months later, I get a letter from the VA saying, congratulations, Mr. Markham. I mean, it didn't say congratulations, but it said, hey, we've determined that through this last CMP exam, you've gotten better. And I was reduced. And man, wow. you talk about a world of hate, pain, anger. I mean, name the shitty feeling that you can think of, man. And that all fell down. I mean, man, that fell down on my shoulders. I was no longer going to have the health care from the VA because I was at a percentage that wouldn't allow it. And I was, you know, going to lose on the comp and pe compensation and pension. And it just, man, it just, it put a world of weight on my shoulders and, and my family. And, and here at a time when I was thinking, well, I'm, I'm actually doing pretty well. Me and my wife are doing great. I'm going to, I'm probably going to resign from what I'm doing. I'm going to go to school full time because a bunch of the jobs that I had applied for, they said, Hey, you don't, you don't have a master's degree, you know? Um, you know, you're not even, you, you know, you, you, you're not even sellable into the real world. And I'm like, real world, let me tell you about the real world. But, um, it, it put me into a funk, man. It put me into a, a point that I was just like not able to get out of. And I appealed to the VA and of course the, the appeal was unfounded and, um, I needed, I needed help. You know, and so I reached out to some people and went back to the care coalition and uh, basically the VSO just said, well, well, that's 
it's the way it's the way the cookie crumbles, man. That's just Jeez. the risk. I'm like, risk? You didn't tell me about the risk. You know, we didn't do a risk mitigation. We didn't do a, you know, it wasn't in the warning order. And uh, man, now I became angry because now nobody was really there to help me. Everybody was there to tell me, oh, well, that's that's just what happens. In fact, I had a retired general um, tell me that, uh, you know, well, the, you know, VA comp and pen or VA disability, it's, it's like a words and decorations. You know, it's, uh, you know, some people get it and some people don't. And I was like, you're a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> you know, you can sit there and look in my face and tell me that and not offer any help. Just that's the way it is. Well, yeah, yeah, you're you were probably a dynamic leader in your time. But so uh, fortunately, I was surrounded by good people. And for any of our veterans that are going out there and trying to find these services, there's two things. One, you're probably going to have to pay up front for them or you're going to pay in the end for them. So if you do get any increase in your benefits or healthcare, you're going to have to pay for that on the back end. And the bad thing about that is, is man, these are benefits that I've earned and deserved. I, why am I paying for them? You know um, what? Because the VA is so hard to navigate through and the processes are so hard to do that. I just can't figure it out on my own. So I'm asking for help and now I got to pay for it. And there are the services that do it for free, the VFW, the DAF, oh my God, two wonderful organizations, but man, they take in everybody. And so they're just overwhelmed and they don't have the, the resources or the ability to, to help everybody 100%. And so I was lucky enough. I, I got this, uh, I got this going and, uh, it was just, um, it was just, it was just beautiful. I got the right people. I got the right legal staff. I got the right medical staff and said, Hey, we'll be here for you. And it, it took about two years. It took about two years to appeal this. Um, when we went to the, uh, when we went to the VA, it was, um, you know, the, the hearing officer, the, the regional uh, review officer was like, we're sorry, Mr. Markham. This is a clear and unmistakable error. In fact, they have the term a Q, C U E, clear and unmistakable error. We're sorry, Mr. Markham. You were a victim of a Q, a clear and unmistakable error. I mean, it was so bad that my law team, you know, presented the case, the medical team presented the case, and it was like, yep, we made the mistake. We're going to reinstate you. In fact, we're going to reinstate you 100% total and permanent back to the date that we've removed it from you, and uh, you're good to go. In fact, they asked for help. They even said, hey, we have many cases like this. Can you help us with cases like this? If you're up and you're, you're, talking to people, can you advocate for help for the VA? And that's where I realized that the VA isn't evil. There, there's no evil monster. There's nobody sitting in the VA going, I'm going to take these benefits from this person and this person. Oh, this person doesn't deserve it. There's nothing like that. They just don't have the resources available. It's just like when we're active duty, you go into finance, I'm sure every once in a while, because they've messed something up with your pay. Nobody's sitting in finance going, yeah, I'm going to take yeah. Jerry's, I'm going to take Jerry's <laughs> junk for you this month. You know, he doesn't need it. You know, we want to, we need to move it over here. Why does he receive jump pay or dive pay or any of the special duty pays that he gets? You know, there's, there's just broken processes and that's, yeah. that's what's wrong. There's just broken processes. And so rather than celebrating for myself coming out of that hearing and going, Oh my God, great. This is great. Woohoo. You know, I'm, I'm going to Disney world. No, I, I looked at uh, my two other co-founders, uh, Mr. Jeff O'Hara, who's uh, our lawyer, and Dr. Mark McLaughlin, who was my my medical staff at the time. And I said, man, this was, waited a long time, but this was pretty easy for me. What about everybody else? Yeah, yeah. What about Joe Schmuckatelli, you know, you know, private so-and-so, you know, Master Chief, you know, of all the other people out there, not just special operations, but all of our veterans, man, like that don't have that voice, don't have that connection. That ended up going to a service that they had to pay for. And then they didn't really get the results they, they've earned and deserve. Now, we're not coaching anybody. We're not telling people what to say. 
and we are doing an honest review of their medical records and going, this is where you should be at. Designed by a person that used to work for the VA. Our legal team is there to appeal situations and, and let our clients know like, hey, this is wrong. This is not by the VA standard. Somebody missed something on this. We're all human. There are human misses on these things. And so yeah. what do we do for those people? And so the three of us sat there with a good bottle of scotch and we said, let's start something. And so we started project one bed at a time and one project, because it is a project that's going, it's ongoing. It's not a foundation. It's not set in stone. We're not brick and mortar. I work out of my house. So does everybody else that works for project OVAT. And we say one bed at a time OVAT because we want everybody to be treated the same way that I was treated. We want everybody to feel like they're the only veteran in our program going through this and that my entire staff and my entire board are there to help them. And then the even better thing, people say, you know, how do you want to make a million dollars in a nonprofit? Start with two million. <laughs> we're, we're not paid, man. Yeah. So I had the fortune of knowing two really good senior NCOs, uh, Lyle and uh, Amy Rosine. Uh, Lyle served as my uh, group chief downrange in Afghanistan when I was the wing chief in Afghanistan for a year. And I and I, I didn't know a better individual. I didn't know a, 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 a man and a retired chief that to the point could help me take this to new levels. And so we brought Lyle on, we brought his wife Amy on, who is a human resources by trade, personnelist, retired senior mass sergeant. So the three of us, three senior NCOs lead this program and we don't get a salary. We don't get paid because this is our give back to our veterans. This is our give back to our, our troops. This is our give back to our young, you know, and old service members, no matter who you are, um, all dating all the way back to Vietnam. We've got cases from Vietnam. We got desert storm. And we don't take a dollar and whatever they get back in pay or whatever they get bumped up to or whatever they get initially from filing from having nothing to whatever their outcome is, they keep all of that. And we rely on our donors and sponsors to make sure that we can pay the people that do it. My medical consultants, my legal consultants, my accountant, my case manager, you know, we pay them to do those services so that those service members can get the benefits that they have earned and deserve. And man, it is truly like, if you ever ask me what's, what, what's the greatest accomplishment I've ever had or the greatest thing that I've ever got to do, man, making that phone call to a veteran that had no benefits at all and saying, Hey, we just got your case back. You're 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, a hundred percent, you know, compensation and pension, you're going to be back paid for to this day, or you're just going to start receiving your benefits. And man, we get to take that burden off their shoulders. And there is no, there's no better feeling in the world. And, and, you know, as a, as a retired command chief, like I provide the resources for the people that I work with so that they can execute their mission and their job. We are doing the exact same thing. The only difference with us is we're a referral base. So we send, I was, you know, so, uh, our team likes to call me patient zero. I don't really like that term a whole lot. Because there's a other, negative, uh, there's a negative other, connotation uh, with that. Things, connotations with it. I have to say that I was, you know, the first or yeah, I was the zero, you know, service member zero. And then the person I referred. And so the only thing we ask of our service members is that we're going to put you through the system when we get you about 75% through. And if you like what we're doing, we all know people that are suffering. So refer us to somebody else and we bring them on. And, you know, it's not one vet at a time. we got 111 vets in our system. We still got, I think, 54 of those veterans that are, um, yeah, 111 that we've, we've put into the system. Again, 54 that are still somewhere within the organization of we are waiting on the VA to provide a decision or we're still working with them to provide, you know, expertise from other doctors to get evidence letters and stuff like that. But, man, we've helped a lot of people. And then our forensic financial analysis on those people is that 
for an organization that is, you know, it's not sexy. I get it. We don't have dogs. We don't have horses. We don't have these ski weekend trips in Tahoe. And those are all great because those sell. Those are great things for our veterans to have and our service members to have. But, man, we're just working on our comp and pen. But, Jared, take, take, take a listen to this. On average, on average, our service members, when they get their benefits based on their expected life expectancy, you know, and after this morning with my wife, mine might be tomorrow, but based on the life expectancy of our veterans, you know, going to anywhere from 70 to 90 years old, the average return that that veteran is going to get for their VA benefits, this monetarily is about 400000 to $500,000. That's the average. That's just the average. The VA paid for me to go to school for three years after I received my benefits. That was about $250,000 plus the monthly stipend that I get. Jeez. So think about it. Here in Florida, we don't pay property taxes if you're 100% total and permanent. So the, the monetary and benefit gain that we gain for our service members, man, is, is, is priceless. And so as a non-salary receiving CEO and co-founder, Man, I can with all my heart get up, look in that fucking mirror and go, yep, you're doing good things today. And so for all the bad things I did in the past, not being a good father, not being a good husband, not being a good human, man, hopefully by the time I leave this earth, the stuff that we're doing for our veterans and their service members and their families today, man, we'll make up for that. But it's such a, such a fucking good feeling. Oh, I, I can only imagine I, I know that I know that was probably longer than you wanted, but man, it's just so no. That's passionate. that's exactly that's exactly what I wanted, and, and so you covered some things in there that I, I definitely want to hit. Um, first off, love the rental car analogy. That's that is that is <laughs> a great that analogy is because Scott Zast, you know Doctor Scott Zastro, man, he is you know, and and I didn't get it at first, and when I, and when you know I talked to people, you know. I, <laughs> You know, we had the fortunate last week to be in San Antonio with the, with the, you know, like the Aspect Warfare Coalition that we're putting together. And I, you know, talked to the combat controllers, tech bees and PJs and some other pipe hitters. And they're like, no, man, I'm good. Good. I don't, I don't need it. You know, uh, match like being one of them, you know, like, like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> like put the ego away. Got it. You, you're a pipe hitter, man. You are the pipe hitter. Put the ego away. Think of yourself as a rental car. You know, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm an, I'm a Nissan, you know, but like we got guys out there <laughs> running hard and man, they're, they're, you know, I, when I, when I say think of the SUV that you rented and took out on the range and what you did to it. Well, that's what the military is doing to you. We just, we just yep. want you to return in some shape, form or manner with normal wear and tear and, if if they broke you up pretty bad and it's service connected, man, let's get those things identified and let's get you the cop and pen you've earned and deserve. Yeah, as somebody yeah. who has rented a lot of rental cars over the you know twenty four years I've been in um, and been out on the Vegas ranges a lot, that is a a true statement. So you know, never buy never buy a prior rental car, at least near a a training area uh, for the military. Yeah. Not that well, we're out there purposely you know, trying to destroy it, but I mean, like these range roads are not kind to any vehicle. No. And in, in our due diligence and what our team does both legally and medically is we look at the service connected disability and yeah, you've got these guys, you know, and gals that are going to go out there and wreck their bodies. Did you, did you wreck your body, you know, screaming down a highway in a Ducati going 150 miles an hour and you didn't make the turn and you went into the guardrail and yeah, you are, you are fucked up. Was that service connected? No, it wasn't service connected. You know, you, you made a grave danger error and yeah. you haven't, you haven't gotten that, you know, so we take a look at that and I don't mean to sound like an asshole, but man, that's the stuff that our team does. We go through the due diligence. Did you hurt yourself civilian skydiving? Oh, well, you know, I was, I was, uh, you know, that's part of my training. No, it's, it's not part of your training. <laughs> Pulling up the stack and breaking it loose, you know, a hundred feet above the ground and doing a low hook turn into the ground and breaking oh. both your fingers. No, that's not, that's not service connected, brother. Like 
So we we do the we do the things as well. Your well, those low hook t- those low hook <laughs> those low hook turns will get you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing that I like that you said is that um, I'm not disabled, right? Um, and and the reason why is because we we just had uh, somebody else on, and I, I think I think their episode will air before before this one because we recorded it a couple weeks ago. But uh, he was talking about you know he's a he's a, a prior Marine Raider and that kind of stuff, and he was like, "Hey, I am not disabled. I may be yeah. you know eighty, ninety, a hundred percent." Uh, permanent and total and all that kind of stuff because, but I am not disabled and we have got to teach our veterans to stop thinking I am disabled just because you got a hundred percent or whatever it is. You are not disabled. Like you, you are still an able-bodied person that can contribute to society, contribute to your family, contribute to the growth and mentorship of your sons and daughters being a, a, a good father, a good husband, a good teammate, because there are going to be times and I'm, I know I've received them and I guarantee you have where you get a call in the middle of the night or you just get a random call from somebody that you haven't heard from in a long time. And you're like, Oh, I wonder what this person's calling. And they're struggling. They are for yeah. whatever reason they, they trusted you or they're like, maybe you're the, first person that came up on their phone or something like that and they call you and they need help and yeah. you've got to be available to answer those phone that, those calls so i don't typically answer numbers that i don't know right but most of the time i will and any there are certain people that when i see their name pop up it doesn't matter what i'm doing i'm answering that phone um yeah and i, and, and I know this I, is not I, a suicide I, prevention Thing that we're talking about, but it it is in line with what you're talking about because oh, look it, at it, what, it, exactly, what, it exactly is. I mean, what are the you know we we had this discussion last week, and and I am not an expert on suicide at all, but like what are the main reasons that people attempt or commit suicide? The uh, the number one thing I think they were saying was relationships, you know, because at some form, point, or time in our lives, we always end up with somebody who's batshit crazy, more batshit crazy than us, you know? So, <laughs> you know, the, and, and I, I make light of this because I, I want to, we're in a team room, I want to speak team room type, type style, and and yeah. it, it is brutally honest, and if anybody out there is offended by it, man, then just turn it off. But it's, you know, we they say relationships. You know, one of the other biggest things is after – our guys and gals are making all this money in the military and we do get paid really well. And then they go, let's say they go on to these big contracting jobs overseas and then that goes away. Now, if they didn't retire, they're left with no retirement. They're left with no pension. They're left with no VA um, comp and pen because it was too much of a burden or too much of a, uh, a process to, to take care of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now they're left with nothing. So now financially they're struggling, struggling really bad. And, and that's where those, if we can take that financial burden of, you know, hey man, I, you know, your comp and pen can do great things. It can cover a house payment, you know, hopefully it's not paying a bunch of credit card bills because you were smart and you're not, you're not <laughs> spending money you don't have. It can make a house payment. It can, it can, if you're, you know, it can pay for childcare. Like the, the some of the lowest comp and pen payments that are out there man, it's a significant amount of money to make a payment for something. So that takes the struggle off of you. And so when you're talking about suicide, like, you know, you get those phone calls. Like the first thing I ask is, hey, man, you got your VA benefits? Mm. Ugh, no trouble. I'm like, yeah, well, all right, well, let's fucking let's get those going. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, you already talked about it. You you talked about when you got that phone call, or I'm sorry, not the phone call, but the letter to say in your decrease, that psychological toll that that took on you. I mean, that you just ran smack into a brick wall and who knows what you happened. Maybe you were in a good mental space, a good place in life where it didn't impact you as much. But what about those people that you're talking about that don't have life set up? They are severely in debt. They didn't take they didn't, you know, they weren't smart with their money or maybe they're just having a, a, a rough go of it anyway. And then they get that kind of letter or phone call saying, hey, we're, we're thanks, but now we're going to decrease you like that's yeah. that's tough. And and yeah. you and I have both received those kind of phone calls going like, hey, man, I got the 
I got decreased. That's you know, we're talking five hundred a thousand less a month now. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah. It's you know, we have you know, we have we have guys and gals that have unique personalities that can't work with other people and they're having a tough time finding jobs because they're not surrounded with like minded people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the civilian world is cruel. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but they don't care who you are, what you did, what your experiences are. It, it's, again, just as we discussed in the beginning, nobody hired me because of what I did. They hired me because what I do today and what I do tomorrow. And, and that's, that's the most important thing. Yeah, it's good to have a good history and it's good to have a good background or a good reputation. But a lot of us... You know, we may not have a good reputation, and and we gotta we gotta fight hard. We gotta fight harder than the than the next person, and it's yeah important. Yeah, and 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 also you had mentioned, um, you know, as I, and I, I can't remember the ranks. I think it's it's O five and up, and then E nine, maybe E eight and up, but it, I, I'm definitely E nine. Um, you actually go through like more of a you you said it. You kind of got walked through taps yeah. and the transition what happens to the others that have to go through taps or the transition assistant program and they're not necessarily getting walked through um how, how, it's unfortunate. how many guys and gals don't even get to do the transition assistance program because they may be at four six eight ten years and say man i gotta get out if i don't get out I, it's gonna cost me my family it's gonna cost yeah. me my life you know, and their supervisors, commanders look at them like, oh, you fucking piece of shit. Get out. And they don't get, you know, how we we know people. And, and unfortunately, I've, I, I am guilty of this. I know people that got out early and I was like, you know, fuck you and process them out of the out of the military as fast as possible. And they didn't they didn't get the probably the proper look, the proper care and feeding that we should have gave them. And so. For those people, that's that's why we're here. That's why we're here to hopefully catch up on some of them. Have you? This is kind of a, a rando question. Have you seen an uptake in that or an uptick in that? Um, just based off of some of the folks that were in the last couple of years kind of forced out due to the the mandates. We have seen an we have seen an uptick on the clients that we have brought on that. That's their complaint. That's the, you know, hmm. at the time when they got out, they were just kind of forced out. Like, hey man, just out process and make yourself, you know, not seen and, and just get out. And, you know, again, they're presented with the VA brief and they're like, no man, I, you know, either I'm good or maybe they didn't even get the VA brief and they don't know anything about it. I, I argue with people that, that hmm. got out and never applied for their, you know, VA disability. And that's, you know, that's yeah, crap. You're like, what are you doing? <laughs> but I, I think today, like SOCOM has got a great, you know, um, uh, prep program for, for people transitioning oh, out. Yeah. The Care Coalition has done a wonderful job of, you know, I think we're better in transitioning people out, you know, and, and uh, me, Scott Zastro and Lyle Rosine will say, hey, we want to affect the people. I want to get into those. I want to get into those briefings, not meaning... Hey, I want to bring them on to Project OVAP, but I want to say get left to the bang. Get left to the bang. Let those physicians, let those docs know everything that's wrong with you. Yeah, you may not have it documented, but man, get it documented. Get it, yep. you know, get it written up so that the VA can understand that this is, yeah, because of all the jumps I had or all the dives I had or how many times I hit the runway or I wiped out on the work motorcycle or I flipped the work ATV, not just ATV accident. It was during a training or an operation. Um, I was, you know, blown up on this exercise or blown up on this mission or, you know, we got to get the wording right to get left of the bank so the VA understands that, you know, because the VA just sees you as a number. And no, you're you're 100 percent right. And I, I didn't understand gotta, that. I, I didn't understand that until I got to SOCOM headquarters. Right. I left the 23rd and and was was fine. Right. Like I, I came off of, the, or I came, I cut a cut deployment short so that I could, uh, PCS. And then I went to SOCOM headquarters and I'm surrounded by great people that are mostly retired and they, 
they basically grabbed me and like, yeah. you're doing this, you're doing this. You've got to get smarter about all this stuff. Uh, sent me to prep, like phenomenal program. Um, oh yeah. And now, so when I left SOCOM, I went to the two, two and it, like every time it was, you know, get up and then talk, you know, chief talk or whatever you want to call it. It was like, make sure you're documenting what POTIF will do its best to keep you, um, your current non-status and all that kind of stuff, but document it. And, and that's, what's been huge about POTIF is cause they are, they are understanding and they do understand like, okay, we will just lie if we have to, to stay on the mission and continue to train, but we need to document it to help this person yeah. out. Um, yeah. And, well, is, I, I, and, and that's go ahead. kind of like you just really quick, you bring up a great point. Like, what is the point of what is the point of the stigma that we all had? You know, my generation, your generation, you know, the generation has come. What was the point or stigma? You know, of yeah, man, I need some help. I need. I. You don't think coming back after two thousand one and seeing all that I seen, like I didn't want to talk to somebody, but if I did, holy shit, I would have been done, gone, you gone, know, because of the because of the supervisors and leaders above me. That nothing, nothing wrong with their part, but they had that stigma too. You know, like we got to create a culture of excellence where we allow our people to speak and there's no repercussions because of it, because what does it really do? You know, is it, are, are you going to be so bad that you got to come off target? You got to come off jump status. You, you know, everybody's worried about that. And man, fuck that. Like you look at a lot of our foreign, you know, soft partners and, and they got, they got it right. Not that we, I'm not saying we got it wrong, but like, man, we gotta, we gotta let go of that stigma. We gotta let go of that. You know, I think coast to coast, uh, Joe at Coast to Coast said it great last week, and he's like, he's like, let go of that ego, you know, let go of yeah. that ego, yeah. and just become a human again, and it, it'll it'll be so refreshing. No, no, you're exactly right, and and well, I want to be respectful of your time because I know you've got a hard out um, here in a couple minutes, but I did want to bring up two things that I don't know if you remember. <laughs> um, I, I hope you do remember, or or. It's pretty funny when I'm thinking you of one the, of them right now. So oh, go ahead. <laughs> Let's see if it's this is uh you were at the 23rd and we were you know we were the first AST class and you know young at straight out of school and uh I remember being in the backyard of the 23rd and we had just gotten done with water ops and uh I was you know we were done washing off the boats or something like that and you know, I'm young, like 19 year old, whatever, 20 year old. And, uh, and I, I just was driving around in the, in the Humvee with my shirt off with the, the, the you know, and <laughs> I remember you, you, I mean, from across the freaking thing yelled at me, like I stopped on the spot and it was, it, there was some quick spot corrections and, and mentorship, if you will. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I felt I felt terrible because I was just like, oh, my God, I'm a worse. I'm a terrible piece of shit right now. But it goes right back to like, like I said, I don't know if you remember or not, but when you're a young dude and, and you get on the spot corrections, you seem to think that that sticks with that, you know, NCO or senior NCO or, or whoever did the spot correction for forever. But it doesn't. It's a quick spot correction, which is what it is. And. Mm -hmm. And then on to the next, like, it's not a big deal, but I, like yeah. I said, I don't know if you remember that or not. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and those are, those are good. I've had a lot of them, unfortunately come back to bite me in the ass because, you know, I was accused of being something or something that I wasn't, and, but though, you know, the, the main thing and, and Jared, the only reason I did that was it, it, it was a professional call. Like mm -hmm. it was, you know, yep. people's perception and always be the professional, you know, that's, that's what we get paid to do when we're, when we're active duty, we get paid to be the professional. And when you're retired, you still get paid to be the professional. And that's my way of giving back to the veteran community is doing this project OVAP. But, you know, the on the spot correction, always be a professional, no matter what your, what, what your job is, because the way people perceive you, you know, somebody's like, Oh man, look at, you know, you know, that, you know, that was, you know, I think water ops had like, it was, you know, like Baywatch, you know, like, Oh, oh they're yeah. going to do oh, Baywatch. Yeah. You know, our support guys would be like, Oh, they're going to go do Baywatch ops. You know, it was like <laughs> running around in your UDT shorts, no shirts, you know, look all badass, you know, everybody's all Man, cut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Everybody's... Well, the, well, now I'm curious. What's the, what's the time that you're thinking of, or was it that? So I was thinking. I, I think we were on a. I, I think we were on a training trip together. Uh, we were out at. weren't we out at Vegas like for a red flag? Probably. We had all the squadrons out there. We we're doing like a pre-training for one of the deployments when we did that. We did that crazy mix of all the squadrons together. And uh, we like, I, I, I think a vehicle got rolled out on a range and it was just, we brought everybody back to the, that's the one I'm thinking. We brought everybody back to the, um, not the trough, not where Pimp had the office, but wherever we were staging out of it. It was just a, it was just a coming to Jesus. And it was, yeah, yeah, brutally upfront and honest. And it was, you know, calling people some fucking idiots to their face. And, but then it was done. It was over with. And we moved on to the next training event. And yeah. I, I think I think I was there for that. It wasn't me that rolled the vehicle or anything like that. But I mean, that unfortunately, that whole vehicle accident thing happens often. I mean, we just had one four months ago, three months ago. Luckily, nobody got hurt, but it, it could have gone really bad. And it's just people forget when you're you're driving at night on dusty roads. We're, we're yeah. not in a we're not in Iraq, Afghanistan, where speed is security. Like we, we can slow down. Yeah. You know? I just, yeah, and it's the, the worst thing you want to do, and, and you know this as a senior leader, man. The worst thing you want to do is look at the face of a mother, father, a wife, a husband, the kids, a brother, sister, and, you know, say that, you know, their loved one was killed because of stupidity. stupidity. Yep. And that, yeah. I, I've had that, unfortunately, and there's just, there, there's just no way because everything it was preventable, you know, any, any yeah. you know, people. We, we do high risk things. People are going to get killed in training. We, they will. It, 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 we've had it in the past. We have it now. It's going to be in the future. It's not a matter of, you know, it's not a matter of why it's when, and it's just, it's unfortunate. We, um, but I don't want to, I don't ever want to look in the face of that person and say that, you know, this was preventable or they did something stupid or heaven forbid somebody else did something stupid and your son or daughter suffered as a result of that. That is just, and there's just no excuse for that. And yep. so maintaining that professionalism, you know, on duty, off duty is that, that perception just, you know, goes a million miles. And, and man, I didn't come up with that. <laughs> Trust me. I had many, many, many face-to-face conversations with supervisors and leaders that had me at attention or against the wall or by the neck yeah. up against yeah. the wall. Like, and it's I, not because I, they didn't like you. Trial. Yeah. And and it's not because they didn't like you. It's, it's because they care about you is why they're giving you that kind of feedback and that kind of attention. It's and look where you're at now. (laughs) You're not going to catch me with a shirt off. Now that could be because uh, I'm not as cut up as I used to be now. So, (laughs) well, well, really appreciate you joining us. Thanks for, um, you know, from the bottom of my heart, thanks for what you guys are doing. You and the whole, the whole team at Project OVAT, um, it's huge. It's making the difference. Um, you know, whether you whether you feel that or not, which I think you do, but like it it means a lot to me. It means a lot to the rest of the crew and, and all the other people that you help. It's it's life changing work that you guys are doing. So we really appreciate it. Yeah, Jerry, I just like to say what and what we're trying to do with our with our aspect warfare partners is, you know, with, with the fraternal organizations and the 501 C threes, the foundations that came out of that, um, you guys are in direct contact with your people, you know, project go that will never ever turn a, a, a veteran away. And if, if, if you know people that are hurting, you know, all I'm asking is one, give me a call, point, point them in our direction. And man, just help me with the funding for it. You know, we we can we can get these people through our programs. Um, there's plenty of programs out there. If, you know, use those if you want. But man, if, if if you need the help, give us their names. D- just help us with the funding to get the people through because the, the the ROI on that investment, man, is priceless. It truly is. Now, in terms of funding, can they just go to your site and donate? They can go to our fund. They can go to our site and donate, um, but. When when we look at that referred veteran, you now all we'll do is just we just ask for the absolute exact cost. It, it, it takes us to pay our consultants to, to get them through the system. So okay. Again, just give me a call, or if people want to, you know, donate after after 
checking this out, just go to projectdovat.org and uh, you can make a donation right online. I truly appreciate it, Jared. And again, this wasn't about asking for money or anything like no, that. No, no, no. Uh, if, if we're if, if we're helping guys, I just the only thing I ask is if you refer anybody to us and just help me with some, uh, just help me find a way to yes and help me with some of that funding. Yep, absolutely. Well, well, appreciate you joining us, uh, everybody out there. Make sure you guys check us out uh, and like, subscribe, and that whole deal that everybody tells you at the end of the uh, YouTube videos. <laughs> and we're out here. Later. All right, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you.